Today, you're going to hear some things that maybe you've, you've heard of them before, but the way we're going to frame them, hopefully, will be a, a very practical way for you to put these things into action, whether you're looking to get better in your health or you're looking to understand what, what it takes to really uh, be wealthy. And we have a, uh, an expert here, the finance geek, uh, Denzel Rodriguez. Brother, good to see you. Pleasure, pleasure. So good to have you here. And uh, man, before we get started, I, I got to tell people the story on how we, we reconnected. Right? So a couple of years ago, I am sitting, uh, it's early in the morning, and I'm going through some videos, and I find this guy who's speaking about wealth, <laughs> but he's doing it from a biblical perspective. And I think the first thing that shocked me and got my attention is that I, I do that with fitness, but I had I had never seen anyone do it with finance. Uh, or to say it better, doing it, doing it in a faithful way, right? Mm -hmm. Without rolling over into this prosperity gospel or anything, but just some very, very practical, easy things to, to implement into our lives that really allow us as believers to really take take hold of those truths that that are living an abundant life and, and doing that well. And so I, I saw that video and I was like, man, this is awesome. And it was about um, infinity banking, right? And, and this whole incredible concept of you becoming your own bank. And I reached out. I was, I was almost desperate at emailing you and trying to get a hold of you. And I'm like, man, I want to coach with this guy because I want this guy to teach me this concept. And I reached out a couple of times that for some reason, we just never... We never connected, and I kind of gave up on it and forgot about the whole thing. You actually recommended uh, a book uh, in the in that in that video. It was this this book of on infinite banking. I got the book. I, I devoured it. I got some things from it, but the interesting thing is that um, this is a book here. And so uh, we got some concepts out of it. I didn't necessarily apply everything the book said, but so far, so, you know, it's working well, right? Things have gone well from some of those concepts that I picked up there. The interesting thing is we never connected, and then fast forward. A couple of years later, I'm at the ClickFunnels event. Mm -hmm. First day, you know, I show up and uh, <laughs> I had a little strategy there to get to the front. <laughs> and this guy comes right beside me and and he's like, he's like, is anyone sitting here? So I'm like, no, no. And we shake hands and we start, you know, kind of small talk. Long story short, I ask uh, Denzel what he does. He tells me he's in finance. Uh, you know, he's he's you know pretty pretty invested in YouTube. I'm like, oh, cool, me too. And 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 uh, I said, man, I, I I used to follow this finance guy. Spanish guy, and uh, he, he was talking about infinite banking, and you kind of looked at me. You said, "Really?" He said, "Yeah, <laughs> I, I know that. I know that industry. This is that. That's you know, that's kind of my realm." And and so you like show me the guy. So I remember I went into my YouTube and I started searching for the video. Finally, I pull it up, and you go, "That's me." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god!" It was just it was crazy. Yeah. I mean, there. Were, to, I, to your defense, the funnel hackers live and maybe a little dark in there. Yeah, you know, it was lights. It's a lot going on. So yeah, and you look different from, from I did from the video, <laughs> and, and so. But man, what are the chances of that, right? And so now, of course, as people of faith, we're, we're like thinking, like, man, is is there a reason for this? Mm -hmm. is, is there a reason for this connection? There's almost you know three thousand plus people in there. And I bump into this guy that at one point I was trying to find. And, uh, you know, we hit it off from the start. We have some things in common. He's half Colombian, half Puerto Rican. I'm Colombian. And so, yeah, we just kind of went back and forth. And we said, man, we, we got to do this. We got to we got to sit and talk about these two concepts that are that are those pillars. Right. Which are which are, of course, faithful, which is the, the faith component uh, being fit. Right. Being physically fit, but then also being wealthy. So that's what we're here to talk about today. And uh, man, tell tell our people out, out, out here uh, who you are and, and what you do. Yeah, so my takeaway for those that are business owners, those that are trying to build a business, it's very important to follow up with your leads because <laughs> yeah. there's money on the table. And clearly, I I missed out on Absolutely. on some on a great potential client, great potential you know business partner that could have occurred years before but the reality is maybe at that point in time either i wasn't ready i didn't have the systems in place right to handle that kind of uh, lead flow because i could tell you the video that he saw me <laughs> in that video was one of the videos that went viral uh and that was on someone else's channels on wealth nation so shout out to them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the fact that so many years later god aligns certain people at the right timing so another takeaway is in due time is how I've been building my business mm -hmm. in due time. Mm -hmm. You know, as as I begin to build the skills, build the disciplines, build the certain strengths that God can ordain a, a divine meeting. And that was one of our huge takeaways was really figuring out, wait, how did this just happen? <laughs> right. And I was like, and I had to find out if you were a man of God. So I, I don't know how I asked, but 
usually people of faith tend to reveal themselves. Sure. And, you know, just here, here, here are my cards. I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. Here's what it is. And that usually helps from like, That's why great. that happened. So I am. I'm 27 years old, entrepreneur. I started my journey 10 years ago, 2014. I graduate high school. I start selling kitchen cutlery knives through a company called Vector Marketing. Also, the product is called Cutco. So many of you will probably know brand Cutco, best knives in the world. Mm. They have one of the best training systems, and that helped me develop patient skills, follow-up skills, getting referrals, lead, answering phones, cold calls. Little did I know I was building a business. Marketing right? one-on-one. Right. Mm. So... From 2014 all the way to 2018, I bounced in in and out of network marketing uh, positions, sales positions, food and beverage job, almost a career, could have been a career. Mm -hmm. Did about two and a half years there, and I got fired in June of 2018. Months prior to getting fired, I started making videos. I started just recording myself going to work and from work. And I was just talking about, here's what I'm learning about. Just found this concept called infinite banking. Uh, I just discovered this concept called velocity banking. I discovered how to leverage debt, how to build credit, how to you know pay off debt faster, how to invest. I'm just like sharing what I'm learning and what I'm reading about in combination. I'm also learning about faith. I was mm. just very curious. I got exposed to a guy named Miles Monroe, mm -hmm. and he was talking about kingdom. I became obsessed with what it is to be a king. I was like, oh, you know, I want to be a king. Sure, <laughs> who doesn't want to be a king? Right. I was like, I like that. These these concepts were gravitating to me, and that was just God orchestrating certain people to come into my life in the areas of faith, health, and wealth. Mm -hmm. Just kind of combining them all together. From 2018 till now, it's December of 2023 and i've made probably a thousand videos at this point hmm. on youtube hmm. over fifty thousand subscribers over 4.5 million views 20 plus million impressions there's all the analytics to show that i'm doing something right <laughs> and i'm giving all the glory to god mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in doing that i'm being blessed beyond measure yeah. i'm sitting in rooms like right now <laughs> where it just reminds me i'm just like well <laughs> I think I made it, you know? Like, yeah. you guys have to see the inside of this studio. It's, it's like <laughs> the prettiest studio I've been in so far, collaborating with other folks. Most of my collaborations are virtual. Yeah. Not too many of them are in person. Because mind you, my YouTube career really started two years before COVID. Mm -hmm. And when COVID started, my YouTube channel really blew up. Like, I nearly doubled. Yeah. Um, everybody... And their mama was trying to learn about finance. For sure. So I had all these topics, all these videos that were just archived about how to pay off debt faster, how yep. to leverage credit, how to do these things that people were now searching for at a high magnitude. Mm -hmm. Here we are. I'm just so blessed. So that video that I saw resonated so much with me that I can't, I can't tell you specifically what concept or what would, what you said in that video. But I will say that back then when I saw the video, we, we, we were still in some kind of debt, right? We still mm -hmm. had debt. And I applied those principles and to God's glory today, we are completely debt free. And nice. I attribute a lot of the things that were said in that video to being debt free, mm -hmm. right? It was just, a, it, it just made sense. It, it, it the, the message came in at the right time and I just, you know, I, I'm a systems guy. So I was like, okay, I can, I can add this to my systems. And, um, yeah, so I, I, we haven't I haven't shared that with you, but no, you haven't. That's <laughs> really cool, and I, I it's crazy that there's so many people that watch my channel that never reach out, right? Right. And then I'll bump into them at an airport or <laughs> yeah. at an event, mm -hmm. at a workshop, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Do you change my life?" I'm like, "How? Yeah, how?" Because <laughs> it yeah. still it still blows my mind that people watch my videos. Right, right, that right, right. people are genuinely watching the videos, not just being entertained or, you know, oh, cool, cool concept or, OK, that's great. I'll, I'll try that. No, these people are like taking hours upon hours upon hours out of their day, out of their Sundays or Saturdays. You know, they're sitting with their wives they're sitting with their husbands, sitting with their kids, and they're making it a tradition to watch these 50 plus 40 plus minute long videos yeah. where I lay out the entire system. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very logical, straight to the point. I'm, I'm not so high on the emotional. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a logical person. I yeah. do have emotion and that'll yeah. come out in certain situations where, where it makes sense. But it's the systems that already have some level of discipline like yourself yep. going into it. I'd be like, I get it. I get it. Yeah. This is me. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's interesting is um, uh, the things that you, the things that you said weren't necessarily far, foreign, but I think um, 
the, the, it was the foundational stuff that you were talking about. And it was the faith component that just made a lot of sense to me because a lot of these, uh, finance concepts are, are, you know, they're out there and, and, you know, the secular world knows them, talks about them, but it was, it was more, um, because I often believe, and I say this even in, in my realm of fitness and nutrition, it's, it's not the how that people come for, right? Uh, it's, it's, um, uh, you know, how do I, you know, how do I actually implement this? How do I, the, the want versus the how, right? Well, and I, I say when it comes to weight loss, I'm like, most people know how, they just don't have the want, right? And I think oftentimes that happens with money as well, where uh, we know how to get that free. <laughs> I mean, we truly, truly know how to do it. It's, it's kind of a simplistic concept, but actually doing it is the hard part. And I think that when it's backed up by, by things that resonate with you intrinsically, it's a lot easier to do. And that's exactly what happened to me after that video. I systematically started to incorporate those things. I also think that, you know, there are so many correlations between health and wealth. In other words, you know, when we read the Bible, we hear that um, Christ came to, to give us life and life abundantly. And so when we look at that word abundantly and we hear the word life, right, we have to expositionally kind of kind of break up what those words mean. And so when we look at the word uh, life, we're talking about this side of eternity, right? So yeah, sure, there is this promise of being in the presence of a sovereign God in this other side of life, but that there is life here and that when he comes to us, he gives us life abundantly. There are other scriptures that say that our cup will overflow. He says, my sons and daughters will not beg for bread, right? Which all, which talks about that, that provision. So I love that because um, when, when you're, so we, we know that those claims, that those truths are for us and they're for the side of attorney. And the same thing goes for health. If you're battling with your health, there is a promise for his sons and daughters that you can overcome that through self-control and all the, and all these other things. And so there's a lot of parallels between health, wealth. And, you know, I, I really want to break this down tangibly because, you know, I guess I'll ask you the question. And this is a question that, you know, people ask me all the time, like, hey, what are the three things I need to do if I if I want to get in shape? There's so much noise out there, yeah. right? There's all these different programs, the keto, the Atkins, the macro counting, calorie counting. Like, what is the thing that is actually going to give me a sustainable lifestyle around food? Do the question. Like, for that person that's watching, that person that's struggling in their finances, they're living paycheck to paycheck, and they just feel trapped. What would you say to that person? A couple years ago, even a couple months ago, I would say you need to build a financial foundation. Hmm. You need to know your numbers. This is something I preach on my <laughs> channel all day long. It's like, first, we need to know your numbers before we even set goals or anything. Like, We just need to know where you're at, right? So identify where you're at. Okay, this is the answer that I would give months ago, <laughs> maybe even weeks and what I've been saying for you, know your numbers, you need to build a foundation. Then from there, I talk about how we can start to save money first. Hmm. So many people want to make money. They want to chase money, even believers, even Christians. Uh, sure. Right. And they won't admit this. Right. But it's like, dude, you're chasing ROI and not, not impact. purpose. Yeah. Or impact. Yeah. It's like in your action. Yes. In your, in hmm. your, in your words, in your faith, in your scripture. Sure. But in your action, you're actually chasing ROI because you're trying to start that e-commerce store that you have absolutely no skills in. Or you're trying to start this network marketing MLM company or you're trying to, you know, do this YouTube thing or do this thing or do that thing. Right. So let's dissect that. So point number one is know your numbers. Know your right? numbers. Point number two is understand why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Build a foundation. Right? Okay. And then point number three. Start saving money. Start saving money. Okay. Because I can argue your ability to save a dollar versus generate a dollar, you're going to net a, a lesser dollar when you mm -hmm. make the dollar because you have to factor in inflation, inflation, taxes, and fees that sure. come from generating that dollar versus saving a dollar first, holding on to it, preserving it, and then deploying it. Mm -hmm. could arguably generate you more money in the long run. Mm -hmm. and it just gives you that discipline. The, this is a very logical answer can i give you the emotional one? sure yeah yeah no because i what i want to do is i actually want to pinpoint those three pillars right mm -hmm. and then what i would like to do is i would like to correlate them with what i do because I, as i hear you i'm like okay this makes perfect sense this is the sequence also of how to get healthy mm -hmm. right? so I th this is where the correlation is and and of course there's so the emotional side what's the emotional side so the emotional side this is something that i would i really would like to share because this is something i haven't spent a whole lot of time in mm -hmm. But I'm now realizing how valuable it is to have emotion attached to your logical brain, the logical side, and that will give you the drive mm. to actually do what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So what I've realized being a financial coach, consultant, strategist, insurance agent, ecclesiastical financial counselor, helping people with their finances, I've 
I've got this group of people that I can split into like 50% are logical and the other 50 are emotional. Mm -hmm. and the, the emotional clients that I have do not generate the results nearly as much as my logic. The reason for that is because I haven't figured out a way to communicate to them the same strategy. It's not like I'm giving them a different strategy. Mm. I just need to communicate it differently. So I've been reading a book, or actually listening to a book called Choose Your Enemies Wisely mm. by Patrick Bet David. It just <laughs> dropped literally like a day ago. Yeah, yeah, I've been listening to the audio. But mind you, I've been binge watching all of his interviews that are promoting the book. So I pretty much know what the book's going to be about. Because right, 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 right. I've just been diving so deep into it. And I decided to figure out who my enemy is. So I would say whether it's to build your faith, to build your wealth, to build your finances, let's just focus on wealth for right now. Who's your enemy? Hmm. Doesn't necessarily have to be a person, but it is a it is a concept. concept. It's a it's a it's a story, it's a lie, it's hmm. a false doctrine that holds yourself or people told about you. Hmm. My enemy is injustice and need for approval. Mm. I have a father that went to prison and was proven innocent after 10 years. That develops a strong enemy, sure. right? Why did they take my father from me? Boom. I go there emotionally. Mm -hmm. This led to living in a single mom household, poor, paycheck to paycheck, lack of education, lack of fatherhood, lack of you know authority in the household, all this stuff. Then it was need for approval. Mm. Because I didn't have a father figure in the household... And this isn't discrediting my mother. My mother is the nurturer and has no place to provide both roles of authority and nurture, of, of fatherhood and motherhood. Like, it's just impossible for a mom to do both, right? Mm -hmm. So when you lack those, those things, that developed a need for approval. So when it came to developing myself in finance and communication with people, I have this, I've had this insecurity that I am less, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough, I didn't go to college, I don't have the degrees, I don't have the skills, I'm not good at reading, I, I'm poor at comprehending stuff. Hmm. So I have You're to study. You're poor at comprehending stuff. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, my, my comprehension <laughs> skills when it comes to reading, right, right specifically right, when it comes right, to reading, right. <laughs> just, just very low. So these are the lies I've told myself since five, six years old, Yeah. Right. all the way till, you know, into my 20s. So I Today, my answer would be to find your faith, find out who your enemy is, mm. and you'd be surprised that there's the there's the positive side of finding your faith, the, the, the hope, but there's also that enemy that yeah. is driving you. And when I was able to go there personally, mm. and I was like, this is why I, I'm so logical. This is why I do what I do. This yeah, is yeah. why I'm so maniacal when it comes to working with clients and giving them all the facts all the calculations, all the scenarios, running the numbers down to the penny. Yeah. Because I have this enemy. Yeah. So that's my answer <clears throat> today, right? Choose your enemies wisely. Yeah. Find out who that is. Yeah. Now let's go build the strategy, which is your foundation. And I would still keep it the same, but let's learn how to save money. Let's learn how to preserve, prepare to deploy, mm. right? Because you save money to invest or you save money to spend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I learned something from Caleb Gillums from Better Wealth. He says money can only be two different ways. Money can only be saved or spent. Mm. That's the only two things you can do with money. You're either, you know, saving to invest <clears throat> or you're saving to pay for a future expense. Yeah, that's really good, man. So <clears throat> before we get onto those three pillars, the, the initial pillars, I want to I want to speak to that. What you just said about the emotional side. And I, I love what you said, because this has been a theme that I've been speaking to my audience uh, for a while now, releasing a video shortly here about the stories we tell ourselves, which is choose your enemy. Right. This is right up that alley. And I think that that's so important because one of the things that I often say is that whether our behaviors are good or bad, they're based on a story we're telling ourselves. Right? And so we are uh, an accumulation, a cluster of stories. And those stories are either positive or negative. If they're negative, you're having negative outcomes in your life because in terms of, of, of health, either well, my mom and my dad were obese, therefore I am meant to be obese, and therefore your actions will follow based around that story, that enemy, right? Same thing comes for wealth. From, you know, wealth, I hear this all the time. Man, I can't, I'm going to live paycheck to paycheck all my life because, you know, that's, that's all I know. I come from poverty. Like, why would I be any better? Right? right. And based on those stories, that's what you're living out. And so the importance of reframing those stories and and actually telling yourself empowering stories that allow you to thrive is pivotal. Right. And it has a lot to do with your emotions. And I, you know, I think it's important because there are so many people that are anti emotions and they're like, you just have to disconnect from your emotions. Like we're emotional human beings. Right. Yeah. Whether we want to be or not, you know. And so those three pillars, um, the first one is know your numbers for us. That's where we start. Right. But we know that that's not the end all do all. Right. And so right. for us, it's like, OK, well, what are you weighing? <laughs> right. That's the starting point. 
because that that's a diagnostic question that allows us to understand where we are and where we need to go. Same thing with finance. Like, hey, how much money do you have? How much money do you owe? Right. So that's the starting point. We need to know where that those numbers are. We need to know what the scale says. We need to know what your P and L statement says. And right? it's so, it's so healthy to just start with where you are, especially from the coach's perspective. Before I even give you any sort of guidance or strategy, just becoming aware of where you're at. Yeah is like yeah. the transformation in, in, in and of itself. Clarity. And it has nothing to do with me saying, hey, you're doing this poorly or you're doing this bad. It's just like, just tell me where you're at. Yeah. Clarity is potential power, mm-hmm. right? Action. Is, clarity is potential power. So knowing where you are. Number two is number two is the building the foundation, building the foundation. So in finance, that looks like different verticals, different pockets of where you're looking to invest, right? For us, in our foundation and, and that point number two really... Um, creating an ecosystem, right? That's going to support the new habits, right? It's so, so we create visual cues. Visual cues are things that you see on a daily basis that remind you of what you need to do based on this new lifestyle. We talk about being careful with people, places, and things because this is where most of the mishaps come because people influence us, environments influence us. Um, we talk about uh, creating an environment at home that is going to support what you're now doing. So if there's garbage food in the house, get it out, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? You don't need that stuff. I love how we're saying the same thing. <laughs> exactly. It's the same. Th- I'm it, like, wait, wait, wait. It, he just said, yeah, I just said foundation. He just said ecosystem. What is right. a foundation? <laughs> like a foundation is developing the environment. What is an environment? It's yeah. an ecosystem. Right. So right. hopefully you guys are like, wait, you <laughs> just said the same thing. It's just is the approach so 15 20 people that are watching just caught what you said and then the other 35 20 people just caught what i just said so right. i'm really enjoying this <laughs> <laughs> right, right. you know you you build that specific foundation so that so that you can thrive because we, we often say that if you get rid of when i say rid i say that if you separate yourself from the wrong people for the time being while you get strong whether it's healthy or putting money away because maybe in finance, those people are leading you to spend more money. Maybe it's family, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's friends. Um, and, or you remove yourself from certain environments that make you spend more money or make you eat more or make you drink more. Right. Then, then the third thing is, is, uh, is the, 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 those things. So people, places, things, I think oftentimes um, inside of the realm of food, um, food becomes right, food becomes an idol. It's the thing that we hang on to, it's the thing that alleviates the adversity, the pressure, the stress. Right? We we, we we reach for food because that helps. That it gives us that dopamine hit. And I think when it comes to finance, it happens to people too. People are using credit cards, right, as an idol. <laughs> idol, an idol called money. <laughs> an idol called yeah. <laughs> an idol called credit cards. Isn't it crazy yeah, that it the, the card? that we've known for all this time is called MasterCard. Mm, yeah. It, it's uh, it's pretty scary when you hear that for many people, their credit cards is their master, right? And, and it's the thing that they lean into. One trillion dollars. <sighs> Americans are in debt on their credit cards today. And I'm like, God, am I doing any damage whatsoever i'm help I've, I've helped a lot of people get rid of their credit card including debt. myself yeah but i'm just like, <laughs> like but there's a trillion more to go I, yeah yeah no i mean and when you i mean when you look at statistics of obesity you know that the obesity rate actually went up 30 percent after after covid so i mean we were already in trouble here in the united states with the obesity rates after covid it just i mean people that people that were 20 to give you an idea a perspective right because percentages are hard to to measure or to make tangible but that that basically is the equivalent of a person weighing an extra 30 pounds on top of what they were already weighing after covid and and so the 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 problem was just I mean, it was just amplified by by COVID. And I think with people's stress, people were going nuts online buying things during COVID. Uh, I know, I know, you know. And people losing their faith. Oh, forget it. Yeah. It was just all over the place. And so those systematic things. So we have know where you are, know your numbers, you know, create an environment, create an ecosystem that's going to support. And then number three. Number three, save. Save. Right. Which is which calls for discipline, especially in the beginning. We're just talking beginning. I'm not talking to an investor that's making multi million dollars. That's, you know, all about leverage. And I'm just talking to that average American. Most people watching this video right now, they're in the beginning stages. Yeah. We need to learn how to save. So saving uh, requires that discipline muscle. The discipline. That, that thing that most people think, well, you know, some people have a predisposition towards discipline and others don't. I disagree with that. I, I think discipline really talks about systems right. and having systems in place, habits that allow you to be disciplined because let's face it, none of us are disciplined. Um, I, I truly believe that. And the reason I say that is because we are all more inclined towards the fleshly things and the fleshly things are 
the lack of discipline and not wanting to get out of your mm-hmm. uh, your your safety zone and not wanting to be uncomfortable and doing what's easier, right? Uh, but discipline requires or saving requires discipline as the same thing goes for you know keeping your health habits, uh, eating well, staying away from certain. So three areas that I think are important and that really correlate in this. I I heard Arnold, the, what is it? He was governor. I'm talking about gov- governator. Ah. Uh. Uh, he he has an interesting interview. And when I saw that interview, I was like, man, that is part of the reason why I do what I do. And he said something really, really powerful. He said that they asked him how he, he had been successful in everything he had ever taken on. He says, you know, you've, you've been you've had three you've had three different careers and you've been successful at all three. How did you do it? And he said, well, he said bodybuilding is a very complex sport. He said it requires discipline. It requires follow through. It requires diligence. It requires sacrifice. It requires grit. And he said, so I won and won all these Mr. Olympias and I was the best and I became a Hall of Famer and all these things. And he said, then he said, I wanted to challenge myself and I wanted to become an actor. And he said, I had the strong accent. Um, at the time, they weren't casting big guys like me. And he said, I had a, a big challenge uh, before myself. He said, but I, I took the same principles that made me a successful bodybuilder and I applied them to acting. And then he became one of the you know, best paid actors in Hollywood. I mean, I think back then it was Sylvester Stallone and him, and they were right, both kind of, yeah, yeah, they were going at it with the different movies. And then he said, and, and then, and he said, and then I, I, after I had done all those things that were in my heart that, were, that I had dreamed about as a kid, he said, I, I wanted to give back from, from, from a social standpoint. I went into politics, and then I became the governor of California. He said, I applied those principles of bodybuilding to politics. And he said, I, I went into politics and, you know, I'm not too sure. I'm not big into politics, but I think he, he had a pretty good approval rate amongst the people. And, um, and, and so, man, three areas of life that most people, you're either Mr. Olympia, <laughs> you're either an actor in Hollywood, mm-hmm. or you're, you're, a, you're a politician. This guy has done all three of those in one with a strong accent being a, I mean, he's, he came here with nothing and based on that discipline and that follow through. And so I think that being able to stay fit, I don't think that the correlation always works. I see a lot of fit people that are broke. I see a lot of pe- a lot of wealthy people that that are not fit. But I but I heard it also from Hermosi. Alex Hermosi mentioned in one of his videos how there is there is there is this direct correlation between fit, you know, being fit, being healthy. And I, for people out there, because I think that the physical aspect is very tangible. I think if you decide that you re- truly want to get in better shape, you can do that. No one, Absolutely. no one holds you back from that. I believe that, um, you know, it, you, you just have to superimpose your will. Do you believe that's true as well for wealth? Absolutely. It is based on your personal belief system that that you have in place. So there's the the precept, the thought before the thought enters your mind and becomes an idea and then forms into a concept, forms into a theology, and then eventually becomes your philosophy, Mm -hmm. right? That is like the order of thoughts going from out there into your brain, Mm -hmm. going into the subconscious, and then you pondering on it, acting on these ideas, and then developing certain results that form your philosophy over Mm -hmm. the matters of creating wealth. Mm. So, yeah. So, the Apostle Paul said, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be renewed in your thinking, right? So that you can discern. You know, I I always find that verse so interesting because this is Paul, a super spiritual man, and yet emphasizing the importance of the mind. He says, we're cognitive human beings. So, what I hear you saying is like, hey, there is this mindset that develops a theology. This theology develops a philosophy of life, which then, you know, because we're cognitive human beings, we think, we feel, and we act. If those thoughts and those feelings and those actions are positive, we create good habits, and those habits create a good character, and therefore, you know, our goals come to fruition. So what I hear you saying here is instead of having all this complexity of like, I need infinite banking, I need velocity banking, I need, uh, you know, I need... uh, uh, financial Peace University, or any of these concepts that are mechanics, first thing that needs to change is the mindset. Yeah, and Jesus' first statement was, repent for the kingdom of heaven has arrived, or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In your mind. So, yeah, repent. Take the religious definition that we own as believers as repent. We think salvation. And I don't know if Jesus' first statement was trying to, like, get someone to convert Hmm. Uh, and come join him right away. I, I I would think, or maybe I'm wrong here, but repent does mean to change your current way of thinking Absolutely. because I am a king, Jesus Christ, and I come here to solve some problems that have been brewing up here for thousands of years, mm-hmm. and I came to restore something that you had in the garden. 
Right. 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 I, I talk about that a lot, that the word repent means to change your mind. So your current way of thinking um, and can be transformed. Right. To be transformed. Correct. And um, for that person that's sitting there going, yeah, this, you know, in theory sounds great, but man, I'm just no. I'm marinated by all Trust these. Trust me. These. I'm the logical person. You tell me something like that. I'm like, okay, what do I do with that? Yeah. What's the tactical strategy. Because let's, let's look at the opposite of that. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, and in my realm, in the realm of, of fitness and nutrition, I can give the person all the dynamics but if that person's mindset isn't right, nothing will happen. I won't say any names, but I recently saw someone who came onto my program and they didn't do well in the program, right? They didn't do well at all, which is rare because eight out of 10 people that come through a program crush it and never gain the weight back and don't experience hunger and all these things. Yet this person really, really struggled. And he and I had some conversations and I said, look, you know, the mechanics are there, but you have to want it. And you have to actually do it and you have to change your mind around. And what was interesting about this particular person is that this person had just come into a lot of money in their business and they were distracted. They were distracted by their social life. They were eating out. They were drinking the wine. They were doing all this stuff that comes with that. Right. And I said, I think that's great. I said, but man, you have to come to the point where you get excited instead of going to the bar to drink wine and, and eat in these Sagat rated restaurants. And you get excited about going to the gym and doing cardio and, and, and channeling your energy and your excitement because you're winning in business to wanting to be healthy. And we could just, we, we were never able to make that transition. I just saw him post something on Facebook yesterday where he was asking if someone could connect him to um, the new 10X coach. You know what I'm talking about? The, the 10X health? Uh, yeah. Uh, Gary Brecker. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Does anyone know him? And I'm like, you're going to go spend a big you're chunk. You're going to spend way more you're, money. You're going to go spend a big chunk of money, and he's not going to tell you anything different. <sighs> anything different than what you said. If, you're, if your mindset is not right, it doesn't matter what kind of dynamics you get. It doesn't matter if they work with you. I'm sure you've had people come to you, and you've, yeah. you've laid everything out for them, and their mindset wasn't right, and it just didn't happen for them. Is that didn't work. Is that right? Yeah, that happens more often than I personally would like. And so therefore, <laughs> sure. I'm looking at myself. Like, How do I improve? How do I improve? And so there's there's people watching this right now at home that if you're emotional, we've been driving the emotional conversation and you're getting it. Hmm. The logical people that have been watching are like, you know, right now, because we haven't been spending too much time on the logical tactical stuff here, like step one, step two, mm -hmm. step three, step four. That's where interview number two. <laughs> exactly. Right. And that's where you go on JT's channel or, yeah. or my channel as it relates to financing. You're going to see those case study type videos. Right. This is a conversation because this element is something you personally need as well in your household. You need a you need someone to bounce these ideas off of these conversations to mold your current philosophy, your current mindset and, mm -hmm. and to challenge it and say, OK, do I need to change something here? Do mm -hmm. I need to tweak something here, improve something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when we're, you know, discussing, we're, we're combining the three pillars of faith and health, wealth, combining these things all together. Like, what are the, the strategies that are going to work for you? And it's it's not going to be the same prescription mm. every single time. Yeah. But there are some principles. There are some principles. And yeah. for, for me, the, the what works, a principle that has worked for me, finding successful people that I can imitate. Mm. And I would use you as an example especially in the health world where I'm like, here's a guy, father, husband, kids, home, debt-free, got a business, multiple seven figures, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. in his 40s, looks great, the hair's awesome. <laughs> I'm like, this guy's polished. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that is the type of father I want to become. That is the type of man I want to be. I'm 27, you're 45. Okay, that that is how I want to look at 45. That is how I want to think, behave, operate i want to have all these different things mm -hmm. so therefore the fastest way to get there is to figure out how to get within his ecosystem within his foundation within his environment proximity boom mm -hmm. get within proximity of successful people and as he says people places things mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. remove all those things as i'm doing that then i'm saying okay tac next tactical strategy is i gotta find someone to run with mm -hmm. so as it relates to the faith I would put relate the relationships. I would put it under the topic of faith, right? For those that are that are like, I don't have faith. Well, it's like, well, faith is relationships. So let's let's we can replace the word faith and put relationships. Mm -hmm. For me, that's my fiance. I gotta figure out how to get her on board with the different things that we're doing together. And because she's my fiance, she's already agreed to go on to get on board, right? And mm -hmm. to and to run this race, mm -hmm. run this marathon that we're gonna do together. So I need accountability. Sure. Right. 
need need some support here. So I think that's another tactical strategy because if you find a partner, especially a spouse, you were mentioning that your wife is more financially inclined mm -hmm. and you're more health. So in a marriage, two become one. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about how to achieve all three, I would say it a very efficient way of doing that is to find someone that has an opposing strength totally. that, that you're weak in. And for me, my fiance, her my opposing strength, she's very academically inclined, mm. smart, can comprehend things mm. very, very quickly, has the capacity to handle a lot of different, you know, methods coming to place, can handle my emotions when they do go mm -hmm. uh, berserk yeah. because I'm the type of guy that doesn't display emotion yeah, yeah, yeah. until I display it. Yeah. And then you're like, where the hell did that come yeah, from? Where did come? What yeah. the heck? <laughs> this guy's so calm and then he busts. So... Now, not aggressively, but emotionally, that might look like me breaking down behind closed doors off camera sure. when I'm stressing out, crying. And then the person that I'm close to is like, where did that come from? Right. I've been you, you didn't cry when it comes to certain situations when you should cry and then now you're crying. Yeah. What? Right. She's being able to handle that. So those of you that are at home, you find that accountability partner, get within proximity of successful people in the area that you want to grow in. Mm. And then also do a little self-discovery and, and give yourself some credit to find out what are you actually good at? Mm. Stop chasing money. Stop chasing things and materials. Just ask yourself, what, what am I actually naturally like good at? If I touch it or if I operate in it, like I get it done quicker than most. Yeah. That's going to be in one of those three areas, faith, health, or wealth if you're if you're good at working out or you're good at actually just eating better than most and you just have a good sense of health <clears throat> mm -hmm. you might want to fortify that position because it's going to build the confidence mm -hmm. to now step into the faith realm of building healthy relationships and step step into the wealth realm yeah. of building healthy wealthy systems and it's going to be you know, building that, that that confidence. So that's like 10 minutes of tactical right there yeah, for yeah. those that are like, where's the tactic? Where's the strategy? I'm like, okay, I just want to make sure I throw it in there for you guys. And the emotional people are like fired up because like, oh my goodness. Yeah, know? yeah. So. No, I, I, that's, that's really good. I um, heard um, a conversation between Dave Ramsey and Alex Hermosi and, and they were talking about how, you know, how he made the decision to go all in on business came from the idea that, you know, Ramsey was talking about another guy who had done really well, had a really large portfolio and it was split between an 80 20 20 20 of it was wealth management and 80 percent of it was in in uh, real estate um and he simply said you got to go all in on real estate and and because that's what you're good at and that's where you're going to so we have to find those blessings those we have to double down on those things that we're passionate about so that we can chase impact and not money and i think that as a byproduct of that things go well and that's that's been kind of my story i, I could have gone off and done many other things uh, that in, in the you know in the short term would have made mm -hmm. a lot of money, but ultimately it wouldn't have the same impact um, that that and legacy that that what I do now and what I'm passionate about done for me. So I think all these things are great. I love how you brought um, the relationship component into it as well. I think that um, someone said early on in my marriage, someone said uh, marriage is not there to make you happy; it's there to make you whole. And at the time, that didn't sit very well with me because we all have this idea that marriage is supposed to make us happy and jolly and. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, happily ever after. But the truth is that God um, has instituted marriage for a very specific reason. He's brought two worlds together that generally without God would collide. But yet in God as the adhesive, he balances those things out. Right. And he brings the rational with the emotional right together so that you can be whole. Um, my wife and I are night and day. We're radically different and yet perfect for each other. <laughs> Um, Same with my fiance that, right now. That's that's <laughs> that's all God's doing, right? Because, you know, it's interesting how these things work out. And so I think once again, I think once you are truly aligned with God, you know, God gives you the wisdom to understand, okay, how do I how do I live an abundant life financially? How can I live an abundant life uh, physically? How can I live um, you know, how can I have great relationships? And this balance comes through that original relationship, right, with God, uh, which goes back to everything we've been talking about. Um, repentance means, you know, change your mind, you know, change yeah. your mind, transform your thinking. And isn't it interesting that when it comes to wealth, when it comes to health, that's exactly what people, where people need to start, mm -hmm. right? We need to know where we are, and then we need to kind of change those perspectives, those stories. And as you said uh, with Patrick's book, you know, really be able to pinpoint what, who our enemy is. And, and from there, you know, we can truly understand ourselves and, and, and produce amazing results. Absolutely. Also, just here's an unfair advantage for those at home that are watching this, that are of the faith, you're a man or woman of God. Uh, 
remember there's a bunch of other faithful men and women out there that want to collaborate, help, and serve. And we have been ordained and charged with being faithful giver. So I have been in so many scenarios, JT, where people have given me thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars of value and tens of thousands of dollars of, of say, money, but more so the, the value part, the wisdom of other men and women of God that have entered into my life and poured into me. We're talking about, you know, me being in a race where the race has already started before I was born, right? If you know, I'm going into a cultural thing now where there's a race going on. And before you're even born, you're already in last. And then by the time you get to 18, you're already being lapped 400 times. <laughs> and to have someone else in the race that's willing to take a step back, look back, hold your hand, put you in the in the cart and just add the boosters and, and take you to a whole new level. Oh. So re remember that as believers, many of us are going to church, but we're not actually present in church. Many of us are going to Bible studies, but we're not actually studying with a person. We're just going to the meeting just to say that we went. We're just, you know, putting money in the putting money in the box just to say that we went or hmm. nowadays swiping your credit card and description online just saying, yeah, I did my godly thing. And it's like, I don't think you did half, nearly half of what you should be doing and actually networking with someone at the church, getting with the pastor, getting with the leadership team and seeing how you can be poured into and accelerate in, in your race and, and catch up in, in no time. And that's literally what I've been mm -hmm. doing. I'm 27 years old now. I'm turning 28 in the new year. And I'm like, there's people like JT. There's people like my fiance, there's people like my business partners, like Alex, Sebastian, and people like Carmen and Darius and Wealth Nation. I'm like, if I didn't have these people, yeah, I'd be struggling too. For sure. So those of you that are watching <laughs> at home, you're like, you're alone mm -hmm. and you're struggling. That's another tactical strategy is go put yourself out there and find mm -hmm. some people that you can grow with and yeah. get within proximity because these people want to help you. Man, proximity is crazy. power. Proximity is power. Leave that. Um, more so than a lot of these marketing masterminds, which are, I'm not against those things, but I'm simply saying that, you know, you have people in your circle of influence, whether you know it or not, maybe you just haven't recognized that have the knowledge, the experience, um, that if you get close enough to those people, it starts to rub off on you. And I truly, truly believe that way to excel. I don't come from a wealthy background. And so, you know, to think today that I am, I am debt free is unthinkable. And yet that's happened based on mentorships, disciple and proximity. And the same is true for, I think this conversation has been uh, very edifying for me. Uh, just very thankful to God that I've had the opportunity to meet this guy and, and, and talk like this because yeah. I saw him one time over a camera. He sort of virtually mentored me and now I get to sit with him. We get to chat about these things. And so I hope, I hope you guys have enjoyed this you know, as I usually say towards the end of my videos, I hope you put the action because if we've sat here for an hour. You've heard some great things. You've resonated with some of these things, but you don't put it into action. We did nothing. So don't do that to yourself. Make sure you you definitely apply it. And so some last words for people watching, uh, people that once again are, man, okay, well, this all sounds good, but let's give them one nice tangible thing that they can do right now that can get them started, that can, that can move them in the right direction. I like to wrap up by saying I encourage you to rediscover your kingdom authority here on this planet. Hmm. For those of you that are female, rediscover your kingdom authority as a queen. That is one of the most confident things that I've been told. You have the ability, you have the right, you have the royalty, you have jurisdiction to be and govern as a king, as a queen over your environment. Hmm. That's one of the most powerful things that I got <clears throat> told to me through a camera, through a video, yeah. through someone I never had the pleasure of meeting in person. And that was all I needed was someone to tell me that you can be a king, you can be a queen over your life circumstances, hmm. over your situation. That is a recipe for dominion, which the recipe for dominion is to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue. You will have dominion mm. in summary it's a be do have attitude mm -hmm. so any area you want to grow in you need to be the thing you need to do the do's and don't the don'ts and you will have mm. the results the positive results that that yield from that I'll, I'll leave you with that that's so good that's so good and uh that's how we ended our webinar last friday our internal webinar with our members and i said you know once you change your story and you and you and you embody the ultimate story which is that we are sons and daughters of the most high god then the question is what what is not within your thing truly truly that health wealth relationships fulfillment and an abundant life is available to us on this side of eternity and um 
it, it all starts changing our minds. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. JT here interviewing Denzel Rodriguez, the finance geek. And uh, if you guys want to follow him, where can they follow you? You can Google me. Denzel <laughs> Rodriguez. You can find me on YouTube. Denzel Rodriguez everywhere. Denzel Rodriguez. You'll find out.